Welcome to Food Vendor 101. My name is Frankie Epifani, and in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about selling food at festivals. If you're new to the food vending, you may be asking yourself, how do I choose what kind of food to sell? For those of you that have already have a menu in place, you can still use these four steps that I'm teaching to add value to your business. Here are the four steps to take when trying to decide on a menu. The first step is, what foods are you passionate about? It's important that you're passionate about the food that you want to serve at festivals. So think of it this way. If there's a product that, or a food item that you already make at home, let's say it's mac and cheese, or maybe it's pizza or burgers or whatever it is, you know, anything that your family, friends, strangers like, that you like, that you enjoy cooking, that you're passionate about, choose something like that and see if that's something that would actually work in a festival. Let me give you an example of when I got started. I'm extremely passionate about pizza. I love pizza. I like to eat pizza. I like to make pizza. Pizza for me is like everything. So actually pizza, making pizza to me is actually therapeutic. I know it sounds crazy, but I really enjoyed pizza. So that's what I did when I got started in the festival business. And the one thing I liked about a pizza item or menu is that I was able to change it up. So I had my traditional cheese and pepperoni, but then I was able to do like fresh tomato basils or barbecue chicken or a buffalo chicken or, you know, a Supreme or whatever it is, depending on the areas that I was in, I was able to keep with the same menu, which is pizza, but just do different flavors and varieties. So the first question that we talked about or the first step is, you know, which food items or which, which food items are you passionate about? So, uh, step two is, can you push your product out quickly? Now I've seen this done so many times where vendors make the mistake of not having enough speed behind their product. You have a small window of opportunity to make money, so you need to seize the moment. So you need to be able to look at your operation, your menu, and say, okay, do I have what, like an assembly line? Like, am I able to put this out quick? Am I able to cook it, plate it, tray it, and then serve it out the front window? It's important that you're organized when doing this because speed is your friend, and you need to be able to do that and put out the product quickly and with quality and the other thing too is like if you're super busy at a festival, people are having to wait in line because you're writing down on a guest check and treating it like a restaurant. It's not a restaurant. Like we're in a food business where we have to be quick, 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 and they expect quality. And when you do that, it allows your team to be in a great mood because they're making money, whether it's tips or hourly, but they're having fun. And the customer is getting an experience. And people remember that stuff. So keep that in mind when you're doing, you know, your product and making sure that you have the speed behind it. So just to go over it, step two, can you push your product out quickly? Ask yourself that question. Now, step three is going to be, can the customers see what you are cooking? Man, this is an important one. So there's a saying that we use in the business. Uh, flash is cash. You know, people get hungry by smelling and then they eat with their eyes. You know, they're seeing it. They want, they get hungry that way. So it's important that you have these two elements when going into it. So you want to look at the smell and the scene. So I'll give you an example of my favorite menu item when it comes to doing or using those two elements is hamburgers. So when I set up a booth and I do hamburgers, I like to use a charcoal grill. And what I do is I put that charcoal grill in the front. Now what this does is this not only allows people to smell it, because you can smell it from anywhere in the booth, but it allows people to see the smoke. And as they're walking by, they're smelling. And as they're walking up, they're seeing these big half pound juicy burgers and like the flames coming through it and the smoke and the smell. And it's like a done deal. Like they, they're going to buy a burger because they're seeing it. They're smelling it. They're, you're, you're selling them just like that. Now, there might be some events where you actually can't have the option of having like your grills up front 
or whatever it is that you're cooking on and you have to have them in the back. So one of the things that I suggest is using what's called a display table. So taking all of your products, whatever menu you have, putting it on a plate or a boat or, or however you're going to serve it and then displaying it in the front of your booth. So when people walk by, not only are they looking at your menu on top, but they're actually able to see the finished product and that will actually increase your sales and help your business tremendously. Okay. So that is step three. Once again, can customers see what you are cooking? Now, step four is how much prep time is needed for your menu. Now advanced prep is okay, but just make sure that you guys plan for it. So take a barbecue vendor, for instance, their prep time is crazy. They have a lot, a lot of prep time. Okay. They have to take their meat. They have to rub it down. They got to get the smoker fired up to a certain temperature or, or you know, however that works, put the meat inside, smoke it for like 10 hours. And then they got to take the meat out. They got to chop it up. And then from there they can plate it or put it on a bun or however it works. Uh, another example, taco vendor. If you're doing tacos, you know, you want to make sure your asada is marinated and you want to make sure your chicken's marinated. Then you need to cook it. Then you need to chop it up finely. Then you got to do your white onions with your fresh cilantro. You know, all your salsas are fresh. So that stuff takes time and you want to make sure that you give yourself enough leeway to be able to prep for this stuff. Because once again, when you get busy, you want to pump it out fast. You want to make the money. You're there to make money. So just make sure you're prepared when it comes to that. Now I'll give you a good example of a really easy food menu item that I've done, which is French fries. Now <laughs> you can either hand cut them or you can buy them frozen in a bag, but what you drop those in the fryer, you cook them for like seven to 10 minutes and then you pull them out and you tray them or you put them on a plate or however you do it. And then all you got to do is add some sauce, some cheese sauce, some chili, or even serve them plain. And that's like, instantaneous like it's very easy to do that so if you had a menu item like that that's easy for prep time now num the step number four oh, excuse me i already talked about the step number four i'm going to reiterate that's what i just talked about which is how much prep time is needed for your menu so keep those things in mind write them down um, now okay we have covered the four steps in this lesson now, I want to ask you guys, I want to know what kind of food would you sell at a festival? Share that with me. I want to know. And just be sure to let me know in the comments below what menu items you'd like to sell. So please like and share this video and tune in for next week as I will be teaching you how to research festivals that will turn you a profit. Now, real quick, I just want to look at some comments. I see that uh, Rainil is here. Right on, my man. I'm glad you could join us. Um, make sure you tune in next week because we're going to be talking about how to turn a profit at festivals. And make sure, guys, to follow us on Facebook at Food Vendor 101, and we will see you next week.